Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central, the channel where I discuss and walk through different features of .NET Core and related technologies. Today I'm going to talk about the top five features of C Sharp 8 in my opinion. This is going to be a short video. Let's get rolling. So C Sharp 8 was recently released along with .NET Core 3.0. Both of these were simultaneously released in .NET Conference 2019. .NET Conference happens online and it is hosted by Microsoft in Channel 9. I'm going to share the link. It has really a lot of useful content in it. Now C Sharp 8 comes with a lot of feature, but I'm going to pick up the five features which I think worth mentioning. And I'm going to start from number five and go up to number one. So let's start. The fifth feature in my opinion is read-only members. Now we have been using read-only variables for a long time, right? And we know the advantage of using read-only variables. It makes your class or struct immutable which is very powerful for two reasons. Number one, your object becomes thread safe by default as the state cannot be modified, which means it doesn't matter which thread reads the object, they will always see the correct state of the object. And number two is immutable objects are easy to pass along different functions and classes, guaranteeing that their state will never be changed. So this modifier is now extended to other members of a struct. I think read-only members makes a lot of sense for struct as structs are value types. Now, I do not use struct on a day-to-day -day basis, but there are cases where I have used it and it's very useful. Uh, so I think for different use cases, struct really makes a lot of sense. In terms of usage, it's pretty straightforward. If you have a struct coordinates and it has two read-only member variables, let and long, then we can create a read-only member or a property called point, which is nothing but a tuple returning let and long. One thing with read-only members is that they can access only read-only variables of the struct, which kind of makes sense. Right. So that's the feature number five, in my opinion. So I'm going to get into the next one, which is using declaration. Using declaration now has a shortcut, which is pretty cool, because you know we essentially use in most of the cases, not all the cases, but in most of the cases, using is kind of used across a specific block. So giving a curly braces around it is like two extra line of code. What this feature does is you don't have to use the curly braces anymore and it will finish the using at the end of the function call. So if you know using internally is nothing but try and finally. So inside of try, create an object, and in the finally, you dispose the object. That's essentially what using is. So in current code, if you had, let's say, a function called create employee, and it uses a SQL connection and does some write, you usually use using and then curly braces and we do code inside of the curly braces and when the code exits the curly braces, the dispose is called by the framework. Now the same thing can be written, but instead of using and uh, curly braces, we can just do using var connection equal to new SQL connection, write all the code, and when we are coming out of the function, the dispose will be called on the connection object. I think it's a very handy feature. So the number three feature that I want to discuss is default interface method. Now we can add a default method to the interface. So 
traditionally interfaces just have non implementation method right and the class which implements the interface will have the actual implementation now the idea of default method of interface is that you can add a method later to the interface provide a default implementation so that the existing classes which are inheriting or implemented the interface are not going to break otherwise you know if you change it now you have to go to all the classes and provide a implementation which is essentially a default implementation because you might not even use this interface i get the idea but i am not sure it's that useful i mean it might be a very useful feature but i'm not sure this is the right thing to do when it comes to programming right because or, or when it comes to design because if you are defining an interface it is a strict contract we are defining why would we define a method which is loose in a sense that you really don't have to implement so i'll give a default implementation i'm not sure that goes well with solid principles i might be wrong i am probably missing something if you have an explanation and better idea please provide comment but to me i'm not 100% sure this is really a good idea but anyway we have it maybe we will use it so in terms of implementation let's say you have an i order and it is implemented by equity order fixed income order now we figured out that market value is something should be there as a part of the interface and then you can define a market value and the output of the market value essentially will be multiplication of price and quantity so now you provide a default implementation for the property market value which doesn't have to be implemented by anyone so in this case it might be useful but yeah in this case probably it is useful in this type of scenario where the implementation is pretty static and doesn't change based on who is uh, implementing this interface so maybe this feature is useful but i am still skeptical i would say uh, let's move on to the next one which is number 2 and this one is a really really exciting feature in my opinion which is asynchronous streams right so so far we have been able to return i enumerable which is very useful right because we can write link queries on top of i enumerable and we know and we have been using yield return keyword for a long time right now let's say there's a scenario where inside of the for each loop you are making a call out to an external service or an io call which is going to be an asynchronous call and you want to await on it so that you can start returning a asynchronous stream in this case this is really really useful which we were not able to do using you know standard i enumerable we have a random number generator generate random so in that let's say we want to generate 20 random number now we can await on a task dot delay and then yield return the random number in a real life example the await will be on an http call or a sql call or an io call and once we get the response from there we are going to return back so the function doesn't have to wait on the response so on the other side of the reading we can use an await on front of things like for each and then we can process the message so asynchronous streams is definitely definitely a real cool deal i am going to try to use it in one of my real life program i would see how it works and based on that i'm going to share a complete video on using asynchronous stream on a real life program and the next one which is number 1 is on pattern matching now there are a lot of features which were added i think four or five things are added to pattern matching but for me the number 1 is property pattern 
this is my absolute favorite i think to be able to match on a particular property is priceless and and the syntax is really really easy i am not sure in case of f sharp if you have to use object notation which is like object dot property but here i like this index because you are directly accessing a property so as you can see in the example let's say we are returning population of a particular zip code and this takes an address we can switch on address and as you can see the switch comes after the variable so address switch and then inside that inside of curly braces we can just name the property which we want to match on and then colon and what value we are trying to match on so here we are essentially saying for the incoming address if the zip code is 09876 then the population is 1.5 million if the zip is 56789 then the population is 1.6 if the zip is 1 2 3 4 then the population is 0.9 and for anything else population is zero right anything else is represented by an underscore and i think it's pretty standard in almost all languages uh in pattern matching so that is that is the number one feature in my take i would absolutely love using a property pattern matching i can already see there are so many scenarios where we do similar things but we have to write a lot of boilerplate code this is the top 5 feature in my opinion please share your view on what do you think are really useful feature for you from c sharp 8 and provide your comment down thanks for watching yet another video and uh you know as i mentioned let me know what is your favorite features of c sharp 8 thanks once again and if you have not subscribed to my channel please subscribe it and provide me comment on how i can make it better and more useful for you what are the features what are the different dot net core related technologies you want me to discuss in this channel thanks